Hello and welcome to the second ever Nepal podcast. Um, I hope that you're doing well wherever you are in the world. Um, I know everything's a bit horrible at the moment. So I know for me, keeping busy with like knitting stuff is very comforting because um, I can't look at the news <laughs> whilst I'm knitting or thinking about knitting. Um, and equally, I haven't really done much PhD work today because life stuff going on. Um, so yeah, I thought it'd be a good time to film a podcast and I've also got some project updates that I thought might be quite interesting to talk about and a couple of like little yarn reviews. Um, so I'm back a bit sooner than I thought I would be, which is nice. Um, I want to thank you all for like the positive feedback on my previous video, I really appreciate it. Um, I will try and talk a bit slower because I know that especially if English isn't your first language, I speak very quickly. Um, I'm aware of that, I'm not a natural public speaker and this is a little bit like public speaking so I will try and talk slowly um, but bear with me um, and I will try and I will, I will try I promise um, but yes I thought I would try and do like a more of a traditional style knitting podcast today so yeah I've got a few works in progress to talk to you about a couple of finished objects and some thoughts on some yarns um, so I hope it'll be good <laughs> obviously <laughs> I don't hope it's gonna be bad I mean we'll see but Yes, uh, so without any further ado, somebody shut me up so I can <laughs> get on with this. <laughs> so first and foremost, um, the bulk of my video the other week was about the beautiful Garthenor yarns that I purchased at Unravel Festival. Um, beautiful, and the more I've worked with them, the more I've liked them. Um, I wholeheartedly recommend number three even though I haven't quite finished the project with it yet and I don't know how it wears. Just for the knitting experience alone, like it's, for a rustic, relatively unprocessed wool, it's like butter, honestly, it's it's delicious. Um, so big recommendation from me, even in the dark shades. Um, this is the Manx, um, no sorry, Murrit shade in organic Shetland wool, beautiful. Um, I haven't used this for the jump I'm about to show you, uh, but just, delicious. So I, what I've used it for is this project. It's my tiny sweater. So this is the tiny slipover. Um, if I can't actually show you very easily, um, but I made this uh, very inspired by the petite knit Silla slipover and my favourite things knitwear sweater number 18. Um, and I've always liked these very textural stitches like my Aosta collection is all like very simple knit and purl designs. So that's very like in my wheelhouse um, and this kind of started out with a couple of swatches playing around like broken rib stitch um, and hurdle stitch, hurdle girdle stitch, whatever it is um, and a mixture of like you know uh, my favourite Andalusian stitch um, and I think it, it's really effective, it's very comfortable to wear and I knew I wanted to make a sweater version on a raglan because I love raglan sweaters, I think they are pretty beginner friendly they, all, they always look nice, they're easy to adapt for menswear women's wear, uh, what's the word, androgynous um, style, so yeah I think they're a good shout, so I used, oh god is my tea gonna fall over, please don't fall over, um, I thought that the Garthner number no. three would be a great option for this because I mean you can see even from here how beautiful that stitch definition is, so it's really really boxy, so I usually like my sweaters to have, uh, I've got a 90 centimetre chest measurement um, I usually like about 10 centimetres positive E, so I tend to have pieces that are about 100 centimetres in circumference. I think this is about 120, so it's really like... And that was kind of um, bad maths on my part. It wasn't entirely intentional, but I like how it's worked out, so it's kind of like a, a happy accident. Um, so it's a super oversized, but also quite cropped, so slightly like... Um, I, I really like the fit of knitwear from the 1980s, I just think it's so cool um, in a really naff way and I love that um, and yeah it's kind of the almost like a sweat like a boxy sweatshirt is what I like. Um, I went very Hampshire then I like. <laughs> so yeah it's got nice slightly slightly fitted sleeves um, so one of the main questions I get about the Aosta sweater for instance is how to adapt these sleeves if you don't want them to be so poofy because they are quite, even for the smaller sizes, they are quite extra. Um, and that's something I actually want to come back to. I do want to make an Aosta sweater 2.0 
kind of take into account, you know, that was, that was the second thing I ever designed. Um, so I'm, I'm very lucky that it, it's been as successful as it has been for me. Um, but I have learned so much since then <laughs> and I kind of look back and I'm like, ah, oh, why didn't you use short rows? Why didn't you add options for shaping? Um, and I kind of think that I would want to have another crack at it using the same concept, but just taking on what I've learned since, when was that, God? Summer 2020, which is crazy, um, so long ago. Um, but you know, it's a matter of time, isn't it? But it's something I can take in with like my more recent design. So for this one, for instance, I've used short rows to just add a, turns out the autofocus on this camera is much better than I expected. Um, I was very surprised when I was editing the footage from last time, which is why I was kind of like, can you see this? Because I, I just didn't know. Um, but yeah, just to add a little bit of definition through the neckline, I think that looks really nice. And I love the colour. Um, it does lean ever so, I think I said this before, it leans ever so slightly baby poo green <laughs> in the wrong light. Um, but I love it. Um, unfortunately, I don't actually think this colour is in stock at the moment. Uh, it certainly isn't online. Um, but when it is available again, it's the Manx Murrit shade, and I would wholeheartedly recommend it. It's like a lovely chocolatey shade. I love it. But yeah, I think it works really nicely in this. So I thought I'd drop a stitch. I was like, oh my god. Um, yeah, with this texture, it's just really lovely and architectural is the word that comes to mind. I think it's yeah. You can see how good that relief is. So I've done half the tubular bind off which is always my preferred and most recommended bind off um i just think it looks so nice and it got to half one in the morning last night and i was like yeah this is taking me an hour i probably don't want to be up until 3 a.m <sighs> or my partner probably doesn't want me up till 3 a.m i don't think you would have liked that very much very unreasonable um, <laughs> so yeah i think i think that's gonna be this evening's project it's good mindless knitting so yeah I will probably I think I'm gonna have to have charts for this pattern I have for the slip over which should be released in like a few weeks hopefully um so I think I'd need to figure out how to chart each size most efficiently because I don't really fancy making what would I need like 20 odd charts again um so I might have a play around on stitch fiddle which um is my favorite kind of chart design website software um, but yeah, I'll have a call for testers for this soon. I think it'd be pretty easy to grade because it's, um, yeah, it's quite straightforward. It just needs to be like an odd number of stitches in each panel. Um, and then just making sure the yoke depth isn't too crazy. Um, but yeah, I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be a nice one. Um, I'm very looking forward, much looking forward to wearing it. Um, so yeah, keep your eyes peeled. Um, I always do calls for testers first through my newsletter and I give that priority and I'll have a link below if you wanted to sign up for that. And then I do like a second call for testers through Instagram. Um, but yeah, I always, newsletter always gets priority and then Instagram to fill in the gaps. Um, but yes, that is the turny sweater. So I'm pleased with how that's going and I've really enjoyed working on it. Um, again, I love simple knitting with knits and pearls. Um, it's, it's just very soothing to me. So that's been ideal, I think, especially because the news is so heavy at the moment. It's nice to have something where you're just thinking in like a set of 12 rows or whatever it is. Or 12 rounds and you're just okay all I need to worry about for the next minute which is is, is these stitches and that's a very privileged thing to be able to say I realize that but um it's nice and I think it's good um knitting is self-care and craft is therapy that kind of thing you know so yes that's that next up I wanted to talk about like changing seasons totally my farfa top um so this is another one that is self-drafted um and this is both a whip and an FO. I need to actually grab the original finished one. But this is a lovely top for the summer. Um, so this is currently being test knitted. And again, I think it's kind of going to be out early April, ideally. Um, so like another few weeks of that test knit. Um, but it's a really nice like t-shirt with a keyhole detail at the back and the most extra sleeves. Um, I just love, oh, I love a big sleeve. I think they're so fun. So with this one, um, it has two tiers, but there's also an option in the design for just a single tier. Um, and it's got like an eye cord um, around the neckline. And again, it's just a very simple, quite shallow raglan. It's quite, I designed it so that the raglan sections are actually quite wide. So it's almost coming up from your armpit 
through to like almost straight up, almost like not dissimilar to this. So it's it's quite nice when it's really hot. Um, and I'll go. I'll just go grab the original one. But I use Knitting for Olive Pure Silk for this, which I think is probably my favourite summertime yarn. Um, it's just so so light. I think especially on I'm using a three and a half millimetre needle for this project, and oh, it's just so comfortable. <laughs> Um, I can't wait for the summer, it's so dreary this week, um, so I think this is like a really nice thing to look forward to wearing. But um, I've only done one sleeve and about hmm, five centimetres, of the, my thumb is five centimetres long so it's a really good, <laughs> really good unit of measurement. Um, I've only done about one thumb's worth of knitting on the body. Um, so yeah, I think that's going to be like a nice one to kind of have in the background. I think that when the tourney sweater is done, this will be my priority project. But let me just go grab the original version. Oh, I've just picked it up and then I've left it like all the way on the other side of my bed. Let me just grab it. Ooh. So here is the original father top. Um, so I made this, the construction of this one was very different. Um, I'll try and film some shots of myself actually wearing this so you can see what it looks like on. Um, but the construction was very different, so I actually made this bottom up and I knew as soon as I finished it that I wanted to draft it into a pattern but that I would need a second version because there are a few things that just need to be a little bit more refined. So for instance, it has a knitted hem, which is a lovely feature. I think again, especially in the summer when you don't necessarily want anything tight on your body, but I used the same needle size throughout and I probably should have gone down to like a three millimeter or a 3.25 millimeter needle for the inner bit that kind of is facing because it it can flare out a bit um which isn't isn't a bad thing and especially with heavy fabric like silk um it's a bit much and um i've lost my train of thought this is why i like laura's videos so much penrose knits because she does this too and it's like ah oh, it's not just me <laughs> but yes i had the original kind of core idea behind the top so it has the keyhole detail and there are short rows um that just you can kind of see the light isn't amazing it's quite late in the day um yeah you can't really see <laughs> uh, it just brings the back up slightly round to the shoulders and it has the this just has a single tear on the sleeve um it's so fun um but yeah, the main difference was when I was doing the short rows, I was like, oh, this would be so much easier top down. And I just prefer top down construction because it's so much easier to adapt for different bodies. Like I'm, I have a very short torso, so I'm five foot four. Um, but like, yeah, my, even here, you can see like my underarm is here and my hip is here. So I'm, I'm, I'm a bit of a short ass. Um, so yeah, the kind of core idea was there, but it needed a bit of work. So I think that's gonna be a nice one. And I think it's a nice project to if you're a year round knitter when it's really hot working with wool for me at least is a bit much um you know if, if we have a very hot summer again it's nice to have a project that is just light in and of itself even if it because you know it's small needles so it'll probably take a couple of months to make um but even if it's ready you make it start making it in april or may and then you finish it in july august it's still nice and i think it's if I may say so myself, quite a timeless design, so I don't think it would go out of style from one year to the next. Um, like maybe the double tiered sleeve is, is quite in over the last couple of summers, but I think especially the single tier sleeve is just very classic, so that's exciting. But yeah, the next project is a test knit for the lovely Laura uh, of Pemrose Knits, and it's her souffle top, so I'm about ready to separate the sleeves. Um, and I've used this beautiful lilac shade. I love lilac. I don't really know that it suits me. I think my skin is maybe a bit too yellow, but it's one of those colours that properly makes me happy, so I don't really care. Um, and the yarn itself is so lovely. It has a very high silk content. So it is like 42% silk, 58% mohair, I think. Um, I'm very, if you, if you don't follow me on Instagram, you might not know this, but I'm a bit weird about mohair. Like, I love it. Um, so I've, in the other room, um, I've actually, got a basket containing more or less every mohair available on the UK market. I'm very obsessive about it and I have written a short review of all of them. I just haven't had time to actually translate my notes into something useful for other people but I will try and film a video about that as well at some point because I think it would translate to video quite well. Or maybe it'd just be like this is a yarn, this is another yarn, <laughs> we'll have to see. Um, 
but where is my lang? <laughs> yep, so I'm using lang lace. Uh, I think this is the shade 009. Mm, I got this from Knit Yarns, the lovely Simona. Um, but yeah, it's a beautiful, beautiful colour. I think it's picking up slightly darker than it actually is in real life. But it's a joy to knit with, I think, especially when you, in this pattern, you're working the first, god, uh, 12 and a half centimetres or so um, in a single strand, and then the rest of it is two strands together. So I took this, I saw some friends in London over the weekend, and I took this with me as my train project, and it was just beautiful. I think I did about, god, five centimetres on my train journeys. Um, but I'm really enjoying this. Yeah, like I said, I'm about ready to divide the body in sleeves. It does look a bit like a jellyfish at the moment in this light, especially. Um, but yeah, I think this is going to be so nice. So Laura's designed it with a short sleeve and a long sleeve version. I went for the short sleeves because I think um, it, it gets quite hot here in Cambridge um, in the summer. And I thought it would be really nice to have something super breezy because it's also very windy here. It's always windy. Um, and uh, yeah, I thought this would be very pretty. Um, I think especially in this like light pastel. So I'm very much enjoying this knit. Very excited about it. I just need to crack on and finish it really. I want to finish this turny sweater um, and then I will devote most of my energy to this and then I think to the Farfa top. So that's my kind of priorities list. So yeah, so those are all the whips I'm going to talk about today. I have many more, but maybe that's a topic for another video, kind of going through all of my works in progress and kind of explaining why I haven't cracked on with them the way that I sometimes do with a project, like with these slipovers, like I've made two of these, these took about a week each, even with PhD work in between. This has only taken since Unravel Festival, so this has taken less than a month to make, which considering it is actually quite a big jumper, is saying something. But it's on six millimetre needles, so it's very fast. Um, and yeah, other projects are a bit of a slog. Uh, so I've got some projects in my whip drawer, which sounds so wrong. <laughs> Not wrong, you know what I mean. Yeah, some, sometimes they just take a really long time and others are very quick. Maybe that's another video for another day. In any case, finished objects. Um, so I've only actually really got one that I want to talk about. And I want to throw in a yarn review with it. And it is this. So this is the second version of the Torino sweater that I designed. This is the first version. So this was made with Knitting for Olive, Double Soft Merino, held with their Soft Silk Mohair, which is probably my favourite yarn combination of all time, or if not of all time, it's certainly up there. I am heartbroken that Double Soft Merino is being discontinued. I think I might have mentioned this last time. I just think it's such a lovely yarn. It's so warm. I think the price is really reasonable. I could go on. But I, I do understand why they're discontinuing it. I think it's essentially because it doesn't wear very well by itself. It needs to be with a mohair. But I hope that they do come up with a good alternative because I will miss it. Um, but yeah, essentially, I will have some videos of me trying this on as B-roll. But this one, I did a construction where you're, you've got a slanting shoulder and it's too slouchy. Um, I used a tubular bind off for the collar and I don't know if that wasn't strong enough or if the neckline is just too big because it is quite large if you if you see um but it sits halfway down my back <laughs> which is really nice for like after yoga or something like that but it's not ideal for like actual wearing so i ordered some i was looking for double soft merino alternatives and i saw isaya's um oh god cars are so loud outside i cannot wait to move isaya's eco soft which is an alpaca cotton mix and it's an it's also a blown yarn I think you can see here how like fuzzy it is and I thought that could be an interesting substitute. Oh my god. Why if you if you park outside terraced housing, don't leave your radio on. It's so annoying. Sorry, little rant. <laughs> um but yeah, I thought this could be a good sorry, keep the lighting level. Um no, that's worth. I thought this would be a good dupe for double soft merino with a mohair because it has that kind of fuzz to it um and i changed the construction so it's just it's very similar to a standard slip over where you've got um you work the back panel to the underarm and then you pick up stitches along the shoulder um so you've got like essentially a rectangle with two rectangles adjoined quite straightforward um and that's what this looks like so you can see 
yeah, you can see how much smaller the neck hole is. Neck hole? Neck opening? Neck hole doesn't sound right. But it's, it's the same idea. Um, and again, I'm only, I think I made this, I used the same needle size and I got the same gauge, but somehow this is smaller. Um, it's slightly more fitted. I also think I've probably gained a bit of weight since then, which is fine since I made the first one, but um, the fit is quite different. But it's got a split hem, which I really enjoy. And the yarn itself is lovely, but I will get to that in a second. Um, but yeah, I think I, I ordered some before it's discontinued forever. It's actually at the post office to be collected because I missed the delivery yesterday. But I ordered some more knitting for olives. They had their um, Ukraine uh, support for Ukraine. What's the word? On uh, last weekend, they donated all their proceeds from the Saturday of their sales. That's bad grammar. <sighs> Knitting for Olive did like a, sorry, I've just had like a mare trying to get this sentence out. Last weekend, Knitting for Olive, um, they had a, they, all of their proceeds were donated to Red Cross Denmark in aid of Ukraine, which is incredible. I think they raised like quarter of a million euros, which is pff, insane, like so, so amazing. But I ordered some mohair to match the double soft merino that I ordered, but that has been delivered to my uh, local collection centre, so my collection office. God, the caffeine from that tea has really hit me. <laughs> so yeah, I will go and collect that later in the week. It's for a third version, <laughs> where I think I want to kind of do a hybrid. I think I want to take elements of this version of the design and the pink one and make, it, make the ultimate version. Um, I find designing this kind of very simple piece quite intimidating because there are already so many very excellent versions on the market so like again my favorite things in petite knit they both have excellent v-necks kadri has a beautiful one um and i really go back and forth as to whether or not the market needs another v-neck when it's just like a very simple fit and like ultimately the answer is no obviously um but equally I like the challenge of kind of trying to find the the version that I like best for me so I will proceed with it um I also I know that um the issue of like plagiarism within the knitting community is quite significant and I think there's a fine line between acknowledging that you've been inspired by something and straight up copying it and I know that I've experienced people perhaps being inspired by my work and I don't see it that way and it really annoys me so I'm very con I'm very conscious of it um because I know how it feels on on the other side um but that's that's a conversation for another podcast perhaps so many options <laughs> um but yeah I think I'm gonna have another crack at this um but that brings me to the next topic of conversation and I will just cut the footage because I've probably been rambling for almost 10 minutes and my camera will cut me off so yes, a little yarn review for you. Um, I love reviewing yarn, it's probably my favourite thing about knitting. Um, so yeah, I got some of the Isaya, I think that's the Danish pronunciation, I hope so, um, Eco Soft back in December and I ordered this from Tribe Yarns in Richmond um, and I got a couple of shades so I, I can't actually remember what the shape. This is E7S and this is E0, so this is like a very I think the light's too warm to get like an accurate reading. I'll try and take some footage tomorrow. Um, but this is like a nice pale, it's like a um, an OT colour. And then this is what I knit that V-neck sweater in. Um, and it's much more of a biscuity shade, I would say. Um, it's lovely. It's made in Peru and it's 56% alpaca, 44% organic cotton. Sold in 50 gram hanks, measuring 125 metres. Um, it is very soft, as the name suggests. You can really feel that alpaca fibre coming through. And it seems to be wearing well. I was expecting it to be slightly problematic, I won't lie. Um, I've worn this a few times and there is minimal shedding so far. I haven't had to pick at it too much. Um, it's got better stitch definition than I expected. Like if we look at the rib, um, yeah, you can see that the pearls do kind of sit back as they should, um, but it also has that nice like teddy bear finish to it that you get with these blown yarns. Um, it's almost like a bootleg yarn as well, it's, it's lovely. Um, it has the lovely 
long I always think that because it's god this shade is not dissimilar to my hair color and I'm like is that my hair or is that an alpaca fiber and you do have yeah you won't be able to see this but like these very long strands of alpaca through the fibre which is really nice and it's I, I like it when you can kind of tell what you're knitting with it's very nice to me um the only criticism I have of it is if you have any dry skin on your hands at all it will catch and it will be not the nicest knitting experience like I don't think I would make another full sweater in this by itself I think I think you use it for the petite knit marble sweater held with two other yarns um which must be, I'll, I'll get onto this, but that sweater must be so warm, like possibly too warm, I think, for day-to-day -day use, but I'll get back to that. Um, but yeah, I have uh, chronic dermatitis on my hands. It's actually quite good at the moment, but I think even, yeah, you might be able to see. Um, between the screen being small and me being very short-sighted, I can't tell why. <laughs> I have no idea what's being filmed at the moment. It's all just like a blur. Um, but yeah, uh, if you have any dry skin whatsoever it will catch and it's not a deal breaker but like I said I yeah I wouldn't rush to use it again for that reason maybe for me my chronic dry skin is linked to my beauty work because it makes me stressed and that manifests in dry skin for me um so I think as soon as I'm done with uni I think it will get better <laughs> which is quite depressing actually um but yeah, I'd say overall it's wearing better than I expected. Um, and then coming back to the marble sweater, this fibre is so warm. Um, I live in a very cold, very poorly insulated Victorian terrace house, which I hate, if, if that hasn't come across already. <laughs> um, and no, I'm very lucky to live here, I shouldn't, I shouldn't complain. Um, but yeah, this is too warm for me here even, so... Um, it's crazy. It's it's very warm. Like alpaca is a very warm fibre, um, but with the cotton, I was expecting it to be more breathable. But nope, it is it is balmy, which is really nice. Like if you if you are looking for a luxury ish yarn, and you want something that's going to keep you warm, it's a great option. And the colour palette is really nice. So th I think there's only like six shades or so. But they're all very neutral so if you're a neutral color lover like me it's gonna be a good option going to be a good option um i think that's all i can have to say about this really i think it's quite unique on the market the closest i've come across is we are knitters the double trouble but that's a shade thicker um and the colors not great sorry we are knitters i love you um but it's true the colors aren't great um so yes that's that and then lastly Coming back to the knitting for Olive, um, yeah, I did splurge a little bit in that sale. Um, so I got, like I say, some double soft merino prior to this, their um, collection for, Ukraine, for Red Cross Denmark for Ukraine. So I got five skeins of their mohair in the shade lead, because the colour I got in the double soft merino is also lead, um, which is lovely. I love their mohair. I think it's beautiful. It's a very good mix between fuzz and fluff and a glowing silk core so I think that's really really great and then like I said their pure silk yarn is my favourite yarn for the summer I just think um Russell Russell um I just think it's really great so I got three hanks uh, three skeins of this and this is the shade uh dark cognac and it uh, surprise surprise it's brown <laughs> I go through um really strong colour phases it's like I've had my little blue phase I had a pink phase for a long time and right now I'm into like the rustic browns god that was a lot of vocal fry um and yeah it's beautiful it's slightly darker than I was expecting I think online it looked a little bit lighter but I'm very happy so I'm not complaining but I was thinking of making a summer top version of this so either a little t-shirt with cap sleeves or like a camisole because I would like to have another crack at designing camisoles because um I like wearing them and I think um a lot of them are not super flattering if you have boobs of any quantity <laughs> that's not that's not true um I think I think if you're a booby person they can be quite difficult because I mean and this is something that I think is an issue probably in my previous uh 
cami designs is that it's very easy to um, make the triangles that shape the neckline really deep and you don't necessarily want that and I recently attended a class by Jackie Badger of the Willy Badger on grading patterns for boobs and essentially it, I mean it was I, I recommend it to anybody if you're a designer or if you're a booby person I really recommend partaking it was 25 pounds and it was an hour and a half long zoom session it was brilliant um and I think I learned a lot of really good strategies for accommodating your chest um so I will be taking that into account I think and designing with that in mind so that's exciting I have no idea when I'm gonna have time to cast this on it might end up being a project for next summer we'll see but it's always good to have the yarn ready isn't it um she says <laughs> I swear if I have more yarn to show you next on my film can you please tell me off because it's obscene even though I am using it it's obscene um <laughs> But yes, that is everything for this session. I hope that it wasn't too boring and I hope that I haven't rambled on too much. Um, it's been a bit of a weird day here. We got some good news earlier um, about yeah, just general life stuff. Um, so I'm a bit happy manic, but um, yeah, I hope this hasn't been too unwatchable. <laughs> I know I know that sounds like just self-deprecating for the sake of being self-deprecating, but I really do mean it. Um, so yes, thank you for your attention. I really appreciate it. Um, I hope that you are doing okay um, and that life is treating you kindly. Thank you very much again and I'll see you soon. Goodbye.